What are the critical components of a successful Salesforce implementation? The first is to take a lean agile approach to Salesforce. What I mean by lean agile is MVP and then an iterative process after that. So you MVP to get feedback as early as possible then you iterate based on that product already so that way you get a quick win and then you get iterative value as you get more feedback it's really a principle of agile that's been around for a long time but taking that approach to salesforce is really an amazing approach because you get the value of salesforce earlier salesforce is a subscription service when you get access to it you're paying for it you don't get early access to it generally you buy the licenses and then you can configure the licenses while you're paying for them. If you have a big project, if your project takes six months to go live because you have to have all the bells and whistles and make sure it's really perfect for the end users to adopt, if that's your approach, you have to consider the license investment as part of the project cost. What would be better would be to just do your big project in parallel, but do a small prototype into a small team and start to get early user adoption with the basic features of Salesforce, like sales, service, marketing cloud, and experience cloud. That way you don't hold up the value. You can get quick wins and use the default part of Salesforce. In parallel, you can start to integrate Salesforce with your ERP system or your e-commerce system or your data warehouse, all of the different places that you might integrate Salesforce. That can happen over time in an iterative approach, as long as you're following an end state architecture that everyone agrees on. Certainly not doing point to point but following a strategic framework for how to add on features and for example one part of the framework that you'd follow is a new software or have a need for a new software you would look at what integrates with salesforce as a primary driver of the decision because that will allow you to build a single customer view inside your Salesforce CRM. There's a whole place called the App Exchange where you can search for all of these apps and a lot of the most popular apps actually have Salesforce plugins. It's a really popular CRM platform. Obviously, it's the world's number one. So there are a lot of common applications that have connectors. And if you search in the App Exchange, that's really the best place to go. It is the appexchange.salesforce.com. You can also find AF Digital's listing there if you search for AF Digital, and that will show you a bit more about our organization and our references and expertise. It's all there, our CSAT score is there, and our client testimonials. And that's a really great source to assess a partner on do they have the right skills to support your business. Another critical component is a customer-centric design for the future of your Salesforce. So it's really to think about what is the life cycle of a customer and use Salesforce throughout that life cycle to manage its engagement. Ultimately, Salesforce is a CRM, right? Customer relationship management. So it's really everything across the funnel from acquisition all the way through the life cycle of the client. That's what we should be using Salesforce for. I like to broaden my thinking around Salesforce and use it for the partner experience as well and the employee experience. That's a really great way of tracking it all together. If you think about those different humans and their life cycle and then building Salesforce for the life cycle. So that's really thinking around the customer experience. That's a much better way of structuring your Salesforce implementation and then think through what is going to help with my customer lifetime value by increasing recency, frequency, monetary, and reducing customer acquisition costs. Thinking through that customer lifetime value, customer experience, the life cycle, and then prioritizing based on ROI using customer lifetime value metrics. And then you've got your design of what you actually need the system to do. The system shouldn't be driving the experience. The experience should be driving the system. The third critical component of a Salesforce project is integration. It's inevitable. It's one of the hardest things to do. It means that if you've got a lot of dirty data in one system, you threaten the other system with all of that dirtiness. So you've got to be very careful with data and integration in general. You Usually we'd recommend that you do a data cleanse in all of your systems. And that can be done simply by pulling the data out of all of them, matching it all, doing a cleanse, and then uploading it back into all of the system. There are specialists that do this. AF Digital 
we don't do data cleansing, but we have partners and contractors that we can refer into our clients that can support with this data cleansing stuff. A lot of clients, they will be used to doing point-to-point -point integrations. Salesforce have open APIs, so yes, it's very easy to integrate with Salesforce, but it's better to do it in the correct way with a middleware. And a middleware is an orchestration platform, and that will help you build reusable APIs that you can reuse for other functions. So there's less spaghetti, there's also different layers of APIs so that you have a framework of data that is robust and reusable within the organization for any technology to plug in or out from. Having an orchestration layer is really important. The other thing that's really important is your customer identity. Salesforce have a CDP, it's called Data Cloud. Basically, it harmonizes all of your data, it sits above everything. It's like a data virtualization platform is how I think about it with an identity matching feature. It also manages your consent to make sure that it's very secure at a federated level. And so what that means is you may have multiple CRM versions. You may have a version of that contact sitting in your ERP somewhere in your Salesforce CRM. It may be sitting in a marketing automation tool that you used to use as well as a second marketing automation tool and maybe in your e-commerce there's all these versions of my identity that aren't tied together what salesforce data cloud does is it bridges all of that data you pull it all together it matches it provides a federated id that federated id is then used as the identity of the customer and that's used downstream in all of the systems it's also a data harmonization platform it doesn't just match your identity it matches different data types and that means that you can build calculated insights like customer lifetime value you can actually build that insight for use by all of your other platforms like marketing cloud or salesforce crm you can also build segments in data cloud and these segments can then be sent down to say marketing cloud journey builder for insertion into a journey so you could build a segment for an implicit loyalty reward you could just reward them with these segments based on if say they purchase more than six times this month you can then put them into a segment of frequent purchaser and then have a journey that says let's give them a free five dollar discount voucher so that's data and integration and that's the key part of the digital transformation that's probably where a lot of investments should be going it's often seen as the most difficult part of any transformation Another critical component of a digital transformation is achieving a single customer view. And that's by looking across your tech stack and what your users are using and trying to put the data into the one place so that they have full access to a single customer view. With a single customer view, your marketers are empowered with contextually correct data that they can put people into different journeys. So if they can see that the customer has a open opportunity for a sale, but they also have a case open with a complaint and a CSAT of five, and they can see that they don't pay their bills on time, they can put them into different journeys and personalize their experience based on that data. That's really the beauty of marketing automation. If your data is correct and it's comprehensive and shows a single view, and what if you had that view when you logged into CRM and looked at that contact record? What if you could see all of those interactions around that contact? That's really the end stage. And having an eye on that is really powerful because that allows everyone to agree to all of the hard projects that enable it, but don't seem like they're that sexy. Finally, stakeholder engagement is a critical success factor. And often because it's implemented into a small group at first and, and organization, sometimes a lot of people aren't aware of it and maybe they complain about it, it's not well done. So it is important to engage the right people in the business to make sure that the right investment is being done on their side. As a consulting partner, we make sure that we have ideally monthly steering committee meetings with the clients, key leaders that are responsible for making sure Salesforce is being adopted correctly, as well as a quarterly executive committee with the C-suite and the sponsors to check in with them and show them updates and give them an opportunity to provide feedback. That is the best engagement structure with stakeholders. That also ensures that we have an eye on what they're doing on their side. They give us updates with how they're communicating and encouraging adoption with their teams and raise any issues that are preventing them from doing that. Stakeholder engagement, it's really important for 
everyone's success, for the client, they need to engage their stakeholders. For a consulting business, we are super engaged with their stakeholders as well. It's just about making sure that you've got clear communication, aligned vision, and you're all heading towards the same goal.